this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Chair, the committee ordered the government to produce their carbon tax emission model within one week of the motion being adopted. Not only did the Environment and Climate Change Canada fail to respond within the timeline ordered by the committee, they failed to provide the complete information the committee ordered. Instead of providing the committee with a carbon tax emission model, the government provided an 18-page draft paper that attempts to describe the model. In fact, each page of the document is covered with a watermark that states it's simply a draft paper. The document provided to the committee is titled, and I quote, Environment Canada's Provincial CGE Model, with a footnote at the end of the title. The footnote to the so-called model reveals that this paper is in fact not the carbon tax emission model. The footnote states, and I quote, Please note that this is a draft in progress. Any comments will be appreciated. Views expressed in this paper are those of the authors and do not reflect those of Environment and Climate Change Canada or the Government of Canada. End quote. I'll also draw to the committee's attention to the draft document's conclusion on page 12, which states, and I quote, this document provides a work in progress draft description of ECCC's provincial CGE D level CGE model used for carbon policy analysis. End quote. Once again, proof that the government has failed to provide their carbon tax emission analysis. In fact, nowhere in the documents does the government specifically state how they projected their carbon tax would reduce by emissions by 30% in detail. Nor does it mention how many emissions have been reduced from the carbon tax or the impact the carbon tax is having on the economy. This is very concerning. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Given Canada's... Since we don't have uh, points of privilege very often, is this like a dilatory motion? Is there a vote after it? Are we debating it? I apparently, uh, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Clerk, uh, I would have to rule on whether it's a point of privilege. And I'm sure whatever I decide, there will be disagreement with what I decide. <laughs> and, uh, and therefore, there, there could be some kind of vote, as I understand it. Actually. Your decision could be well, yeah, my decision could be challenged. So that's how I understand it. So. And are we just to assume that we're going to deal with this for the remainder of the until 6 p.m. or what time will we go? Well, we do. Um, that's a good question. Uh, we we do have the room till six because we we're expecting to do a future business. But in any event, I can't interrupt Mr. Mazur at this point, can I? You know, the only thing that could stop Mr. Mazur would be if the resources were no longer available. Is that correct? P pardon. We have resources. Nobody's uh, turned off the, the mics or the, the interpretation. So go ahead, Mr. Meath. Thank you, Chair. Once again, proof that the government has failed to provide their carbon tax emission analysis. In fact, nowhere in the documents does the government specifically state how they projected their carbon tax would reduce emissions by 30% in details. Nor does it mention how many emissions have been reduced from the carbon tax or the impact the carbon tax is having on the economy. This is very concerning given Canada's Commissioner of the Environments has stated that the government is not on track to meet its own 2030 emission reduction targets. Chair, when the government fails to provide documents, the committee ordered, they undermined the committee and the limit our ability to serve Canadians. Failing to provide documents ordered by a committee is a breach of privilege. I therefore ask to move my motion of privilege so we can obtain the government's carbon tax emission information. Thank you. I have to rule. Okay. Um, uh, this is the first time I've, uh, I think we've encountered something like this. The, w the way I see it, um, the, I believe that the documents have been have been uh, provided. Uh, is that, I'll ask Mr. Vancouver, to, yeah, they've been provided. Yeah, I mean, but, 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 but it, regardless, I think, I mean, let's say, you know, theoretically, Mr. Mazur, if you had said, we want the documents within a half an hour. And, I didn't. No, no, but, but they're, they're, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying hypothetically. And, it, you know, obviously it wouldn't be possible within, within half an hour. So uh, 
would that be a breach of privilege? I, I don't, you know, my gut tells me no. You did ask for them before. Um, you asked for them in a week. You gave a week. The, uh, Mr. Van Coeverden mentioned uh, at the last meeting that this would be very difficult, and we did get them maybe not a week later, but almost a week later. So to, to me, it's not the end of the world, you know, that, that we got them a bit late. That's number one. Number two, my understanding is there is no, you know, there are estimates, there's modeling estimates of what, how much the, the price on carbon will, will reduce greenhouse gas emissions. My understanding, and you know, maybe I'm wrong, is that there, there, there is no data specifically stating that the price on carbon resulted in a, 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 an X amount of reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, and I don't even think that's possible, quite frankly. I think you can do modeling and you can estimate and there's good economic theory behind the price on carbon. So, in a sense, we're asking for something that's not possible to produce. Uh, so, uh, yeah.